Welcome to our lecture online. So far we've been introduced to the principle of least action. We have understood that any path taken by an object under the influence of gravity will take such a path that this integral is a minimum. And then we've seen some examples where if we take a different path, the result is larger than that minimum. So, so far so good. We haven't proven it yet, but at least we have the concept down. Now we may ask ourselves the question, what good is that? What is the purpose of all that? Well, there are some practical applications, so let's see where we're going to go next. First of all, we're going to show that the difference in the kinetic energy from point one to point two as we travel along a path, plus the difference in the potential energy as we travel along that path, the sum of those should equal zero. And if we then use that, we can show that this equation is true that the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus 2g times the difference in the height. We can also show in will that when we start with f equals ma, we can derive these two equations of kinematics, and when we combine them, we end up with the very same equation. So in other words, we can solve problems by using the equation f equals ma, or we can use, solve the same problems by using the change in kinetic energy and the change in potential energy. The difference is that here we get information along the path as a function of time, which we don't get this here when we use the energy equation. Next, we're going to again take our, our integral here, which represents the action of an object as it follows, presumably, the path of least action, the minimum path taken. And we're going to take that equation and show that what's inside the integral the kinetic energy minus the potential energy, which is integrated over time, can be expressed in terms of what we call the Lagrangian. We're going to set this equal to the Lagrangian, which essentially is 1 half mv squared minus mgy. And then, instead of writing v, we can write y dot. y dot is basically the velocity uh, in a different format, written in terms of dy dt. So we call this quantity the Lagrangian, and then we're going to show that if we take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity, and then we take the derivative of that with respect to time, and subtract from that the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to y, this difference equals zero. Then we're going to show that this difference, being equal to zero, is the same thing as f equals ma. And since the same thing as f equals ma, and we can solve problems using this equation or this equation, we then say, well, that means that we can show this, take this equation, which is essentially f equals ma, and use it to solve kinematics problems. We're going to show you some examples of the kinematics problems that we can solve with it, and it turns out you can solve way more problems using this method than using f equals ma, because if you're going to use f equals ma, you really need to know the force along the path taken. You don't need to know that by using the difference in the energy equation, and therefore this can be a very practical way to solve some more complicated problems. So we'll show you some examples, and then eventually, at the end, we're then going to show the proof of the principle of least action, where we started in the first place. We're actually going to prove that that's indeed the case. So far we've only given you some examples where if you don't take the path that we know it's going to take, the integral is a bigger number. Now you'll see there's actually a proof to prove that, and we'll end up at that point. And after that, we should have a really good understanding of the principle of least action. And that is how it's done.